So in this video, I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to play offlane and predecessor. For this example, I'm going to pick Grux. He's a pretty uh, straightforward character that is pretty balanced and honestly is pretty OP and broken right now. But he's the, the he's one of the easiest characters to use. His abilities, like I said, they're pretty straightforward. And a lot of the characters in the game have complicated abilities that you kind of need to play them to figure out the skills. But yeah, his is straightforward. And I also want to add before we get started that this is just a basic guide that might not even be the best um, options or the best things to do. I'm just going to have a few cards that I suggest as well as some tactics and things that you want to watch for when you're playing offlane. Uh, there's so many different ways to play the game. So many different card variations that you can get. This is just the one that I use and I found a lot of luck with. And I thought it might help a lot of new players out who are wondering how to play offlane. So the first decision you want to make is which crest to pick. And for Grux, this warrior crest is the best one. Um, I'll get into it further, but you get to choose one of the three below it. And uh, they have different abilities. And I'll go over that when we get to that point. But uh, for Grux, anyways, the fighter one is the one you want. They have other ones for like an assassin. If you're an assassin character or a tank character, they have different ones. But for Grux, that's one you want. So each crest gives you a different goal to upgrade the crest and make it better and eventually you can select one of the three below to upgrade the warrior crest what you need to do is deal damage and kill enemies to upgrade it and eventually when you upgrade it like i said you'll be able to choose one of those three cards so all the cards that you can choose are really good but this is the best card in my opinion so it adds physical power health and ability haste but the big thing that it does is it creates a dueling zone around you in a large area that remains for 15 seconds. Yourself and allied heroes within the zone will gain 15% damage and bonus movement speed for three seconds, and enemies will be slowed. So basically what this does is it puts an area around you that makes you able to move faster and also to do more damage, 15% more damage. And when you're high level, that is a significant amount of damage. And the icing on the cake for it is it adds it for your teammates as well. So if you're in a team fight, this card is massive. A couple other things to note about this is that can be dual purpose. If you were almost dead and you're getting chased, you can use this card to get away from people because it slows the enemy down. It makes you run faster. So you can either chase someone down with it or get away really easily. It's just really rounded card. It's kind of broken. So once you get to this point, you'll have to decide which path you want to take with cards and which card to select for your first one. This will depend on a couple things, which character you're playing is one and which character you are facing as well. You can tell who you are facing by looking at the top right corner and it takes time and experience to figure out which characters you're most likely to face. Uh, looking at here, I know I'm going to either face Feng Mao or Richter. I'm able to know that because I've played the game enough to know that generally those two are the only characters that are on that team that would be played in offlane. And that comes with experience in playing, as well as just looking and knowing what characters are offlane characters. The reason that these two things are important is because, first of all, you want to know what abilities suit your character best in general. And with Grux, you want physical power because that is what he uh, mostly does. All of his attacks are physical power, except for the bleed damage, but that's not super important. But one of the redeeming things about Grux is he has a lot of attack speed and attack damage. And so you want to go and focus on things that will add attack speed, make your attacks faster and so you hit harder. And one of the things I like as well is to add lifesteal. So when you're hitting people and they're attacking you back, you're healing up while you're fighting them. And if you increase your attack speed, you're hitting them hard and fast and you're healing while you're doing it. And you can become invincible when you're doing this. So the other point that you want to consider is who you are facing in your offlane. Um, you can see here that it ends up being that I'm facing Feng Mao. And Feng Mao has a lot of damage. He attacks really fast and hits hard, but he doesn't have a lot of armor. So you want to consider that when you're selecting your abilities, because if it's somebody that's heavy armor, there's a set, a certain card that I'll show you that you want to get uh, pretty quickly. But since it's Fang Mao, I'll focus on the attack speed and life steal. So let's say that you were facing a steel or a crunch or a Richter in the offlane. 
this card right here that I'm showing you would be the first card that you'd want to get. The reason for this is those characters are all high armored characters and people will usually go and add armor to them. And what this card does is when you're attacking them, it reduces their armor. Well, not reduces their armor, it just makes it so that you ignore some of their armor when you're fighting them and it can be huge in a fight. So if the person you're fighting is lightly armored or medium armored, uh, the first card I recommend getting is this card. It's called Sky Splitter, and you'll have to search it up because it's not one of the recommended cards for Grux. But I like it because it adds physical power as well as five lifesteal, attack speed, and critical chance. So you'll be able to hit faster, steal their health, and do critical damage, which can be huge. And that's just the three things that you need with Grux, and it's good to get that right off the get-go. So the cards that you choose next are definitely situational, but this is one that I definitely suggest everybody getting. Uh, there's different, different variations of this card, but this is the one that you want for Grux because it adds attack speed and critical uh, chance as well. But what it does is it reduces the healing of the person that you're attacking. And a lot of people have a lot of lifesteal and just general healing. And depending on if you're fighting someone that has a support, the healers can heal up as well. And it can get really annoying. This is one of the cards that everyone on your team should be getting one of the variations of this because it is really clutch to have. Um, it's just like any other game that you play, like uh, like Paladins or Overwatch, where you have reduced healing. It can be really clutch, and it's huge to get. But like I said, uh, when choosing when to get this card is really situational. Uh, it depends whether the person you're fighting is um, focusing on that. Or maybe you might be facing a Chimera that's in the jungle. He just has a ton of life steal and healing. And it's really big to get when you're fighting a Chimera or other people who use a lot of life steal or other healing. So the next card I'm going to suggest is going to be another situational one. Uh, if you're fighting someone that does a lot of physical damage, you want the one on the left, Draconum. I think it's how you say it. Probably not. And if you're fighting someone that has a lot of magical damage, you'll want the one on the right, which is magical armor. And honestly, it really wouldn't hurt to get both of these if you were struggling with it, but I think only one is needed. So the next card I like to get is Ashbringer. Uh, the reason I like this card is it adds additional attack speed and critical chance, but the other thing I like as well is when you're, every hit that you get, it reduces the cooldown of your uh, normal abilities. Not your ultimate, which kind of sucks, but all your other abilities. Uh, you'll get them faster, so you can just be going ham on someone with your crazy attack speed. And your abilities just keep refreshing and keep using them again. If they get away from you, you can use your ability that you bring them back to you or your dash. It's just really good to have. So the last card I recommend getting is called Imperator. And there's two things I really like about this is, well, obviously it has the critical strike chance, but it adds a lot of physical power. But the other thing I like about it is it makes your critical strikes do 15% more damage. And so with all the other cards that we've gotten that adds critical chance, uh, most of your hits should be critical and you'll be doing more damage. And what this does is it just makes that damage 15% more, which can be huge. So now that we got the card sorted out, I'm going to move to one of the things in Predecessor that you should know in general. Especially in the early game, you want to make sure that you get the last hit on the minions because it gives you extra gold for getting the last hit on them. And it's something you really want to focus on early game because it gives you extra experience and gold. Uh, and it can be really huge if you get a lot of last minion hits and your enemy does not. You will level up before them. And when I'm playing Grux, I like to level up before them and I can use the dash like I just used there. And then hit them with your right click, which does a ton of damage. And they'll just sit there bleeding and taking damage over time. Uh, so it's really good to get that before they do. So that's one thing. It's really important no matter which character you're playing, except for support. You don't want to be stealing the last hits from the carry when you're playing support. But I'll do another support video later. But yeah, you get the point. So the next point I want to bring up is what abilities to get when you're leveling up. When I'm playing Grux, I like to get the right click ability first because I think it can be really huge to get a few early hits in on your enemy with it. After I get the right click ability, I like to get level one on the E and the Q and then start working on the right click until you get your ultimate. 
And then when you get your ultimate, obviously, whenever you unlock a level that you can get an uh, upgrade on your ultimate, you want to put it into your ultimate first. But I like to get my right click maxed before my other abilities. And the reason for that is because the right click, I feel like it's the, the most damage doing ability where you can do the most damage. And once I have the right click fully unlocked, I'll work on the E, which is the dash. Um, the Q is really nice, but I feel like it's not the most important ability to have. It's a good ability to have, but you don't need to have it every eight seconds. It's something that you need once. If you need to use it more than once in a fight, then you're messing it up and you should just be running away anyways. So the next thing I want to talk about is green buff. So green buff can be huge. It gives you both XP and heals you up and gives you a little bit of mana, which can be really huge if used properly. So before you even go after green buff, there's a couple things that you want to pay attention for. The first thing is you want to make sure that their jungler is nowhere near you. Uh, if you were watching the video, you could see that the on the map that the jungler, which is Richter, he was in the middle lane when I started attacking the green buff. So I knew I'd have time to kill it. And I really wasn't worried about Fang Mao because he, he was at half health. And if he came to stop me, uh, it really would have just been a death sentence for him because I would have just stopped attacking the buff and killed him. So I knew he was not a threat. But a lot of times when you're going after green buff, you want to go for it when you can get your enemy low enough that he goes back to base. Or sometimes you'll have your jungler and he'll be in your side of the jungle and he'll come and help you jump the guy and he'll go back to heal. And while he's going back to base, you can run over and grab the green buff. Uh, the green buff isn't really worth dying over, so don't go after it and don't die. Don't lose a tower over it. It's something to consider if you have the chance and the opportunity for it, but like I said, it's not worth dying over. So green buff can be used to ambush people and to lay traps. Uh, you can see in this clip, Richter comes out of the jungle, and I know I could take him in a fight, but I looked at the map and I seen that no one was near me, so I came over to get green buff, and he sees his opportunity to come and try to steal the green buff from me. And I use it to actually just ambush him and jump him, and I start beating the hell out of him. And he ends up stealing the green buff, which he's probably proud of for a few seconds, but... Like I said, I knew I could take him, so I used it as an ambush to drag him into a fight far away from his tower. And like I said, uh, green buff isn't worth dying over. It gives you a little bit of XP, but I got a lot more XP and a crap ton of gold from killing him. I, it was so much better to get a kill than it was for him to get the green buff. But this just shows that there's a few strategies you can use with it that can make it fun. So the two, next two things I'm going to discuss are two of the biggest things that you need to know and to be doing. Uh, the first one is what you just watched is placing down wards. You want to make sure your wards are constantly being used. This is really important because when you're about to get jumped by the jungle, it can give you crucial seconds to be able to escape, to get to safety before the jungle comes up and ambushes you. And you see here, uh, I saw the Gideon coming, but I didn't put the ward far enough into the jungle. So he did jump me, but luckily my uh, jungler was there to help me. So we kind of turned it around on them, but it could have been really bad. If my jungler wasn't there to help me, I would have died right there. And I mean, my jungler kind of was an idiot and charged into the tower and died anyways, but he saved me from dying, which is the important part, right? So just one more thing about wards is something that you want to kind of do to help your team. But uh the orb prime is on your side and later in the game orb prime becomes really important and uh what it does when you you're, you kill it it gives your team minions a buff as well as your people it gives them a buff to be able to uh have more attack power and attack speed and all that good stuff but normally people don't go for orb prime until later in the game but when it gets to later in the game uh, it's kind of your job to put a ward down on that just so if the enemy team does go for it you'll be alert and you can go and try to stop them from getting it or try to steal it. So that's just something to keep in mind. So the next thing I want to discuss is probably the biggest thing that you can do in Predecessor to be really good at the game and to always be on point, but it's to pay attention to your map. Having map awareness is one of the most important things that you can have in this game. Keeping tabs on all the enemies on the map at all times will keep you from getting jumped and having a, 
what they call a gank is when someone comes and jumps you and it's a 2v1 but it will stop those from happening if you know what is going on at the map at all times and paying attention being in the offlane there's going to be times where the jungler will be having a fight with the other jungler in the forest and if you're paying attention you can jump in and help him to like I said, to gank and be able to get an early kill or a late kill, depending on when it's at. But it can be huge to just be paying attention and knowing when your teammates need help. And if there's a situation where you need to rotate over and help the mid lane or uh, if your team's going to go after orb prime and just I can't stress enough how important it is to just pay attention to that map. Uh, your wards will go off when there's someone coming up on you and you gotta be paying attention to it. It does make a noise, but sometimes it, it makes that noise whenever anybody crosses a ward. So you just want to be paying attention on that. I can't stress that enough. Like I said, another thing that you want to do is, uh, if your guy is missing and you do not know where he's at, if he returned to base and he should be back by now and he's not. Uh, you want to warn your teammates using the commands. If you press C, you can go do it. But if you see them run off into the jungle running towards mid lane, and you can see your mid lane person on the map is pushed way too far ahead, uh, you can make an educated guess that they're going to go try to gank that person in the middle. And it doesn't hurt to say enemy missing in, like in this case, right lane. Enemy missing right lane, and then go careful middle. And it'll warn the person in the middle that the person in your lane is missing. And as far as you know, they're headed over that way. Uh, communication is one of the biggest things in the game as well. Uh, you want to make sure that you're, if your person's missing, you're letting your teammates know. Because it can be really bad for them if they get jumped and they don't have no warning or anything like that. So that's the last like trick and tip that I have for playing off lane. This is just one of those games that you get experience and you learn what to do against certain characters. You learn their abilities and how to avoid them. And it's not something I can go over entirely in a video. Like each character that I face, I have different strategies. I used to face them and all that kind of stuff. I mentioned a few of them, but if I were to go into every strategy I have for facing every character with every person that I play, this video would never end. This is just kind of a basic guide for someone who maybe is new to the game and wants to know the basics of how to play it. One of the last things I will say is don't ever give up. If you're struggling and you're 0 and 4 and you can't kill the other person, just don't give up. Keep trying. Don't be discouraged. It can really turn around in an instant. In this game, I was getting jumped by their jungler constantly and I was struggling. But uh, once I got my guy high enough level, I was able to take on these people and we really turned it around. We actually ended up winning this game. My point is, is that the game really isn't over until the fat lady sings. You will run into people that are toxic and they might start pointing the finger at you and saying it's your fault that you're losing. But... Just keep going, keep having fun, don't get discouraged, just keep trying. And if you feel like you need a couple of practice rounds, uh, you can go do some games with bots if you want to. I mean, it's they're, they're really easy to beat, but you can practice using characters, learn their abilities, and build up confidence, I guess. That that's can be a really important thing to do, too. But anyways, I'm going to try to be streaming Predecessor more. Uh, I'm going to try to do it at least every other day, if not more. So be sure to like the video and to subscribe if you want to see more videos. And if you have any questions or you just want to chat and learn more about the game, or even if you want somebody to play with, uh, hit me up and watch for the stream. I don't get too many chatters in my stream, so it'd be nice to have some people drop by and ask questions if you have any. And I'm not against playing with viewers. I'm trying to find a group of people that I could play with so I can have consistent teammates so we understand each other and we can use Discord and all that stuff because I feel like having communication in this game is one of the biggest things to have. But uh, anyways, thank you for making it this far if you did and be sure to subscribe and like the video and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.